welcome back to Amanda's Favorites. Today we're going to be doing a Hobonichi overview. We're going to do just a, a look at the cousin, just the Hobonichi Techo English and the Hobonichi Weeks. So if you've been looking at Hobonichi, if you're wondering which one you might want to try, hopefully this video will help you or it could just introduce you to Hobonichi. I am new to Hobonichi as of just, you know, a couple months ago. How many months ago? Maybe four, five, six months ago? Um, anyway, so I am not a Hobonichi expert. I'm gonna be the first one to tell you that. I'm gonna show you how I've used these planners. Um, I have watched some great ladies on, um, and I will link them down below, two of my favorites for Hobonichi videos. And so I have learned a lot from them also. Um, so I am new to this and let's get into this. And if you are interested in either any of these by the end of the video, I will link the full review for each one of these planners down below. So I have a full separate review because we are not gonna go a full walkthrough on these planners. This is gonna be an overview. So if you see one you're interested in, you can go watch the detailed video on that planner. I will link it below in the description box. Okay, overview here is the cousin actually has monthly views, weekly views, and daily pages for an entire year in this planner. So that is the magic of the Tomei River paper is that it is very thin, it is very lightweight. And that is the only way you can fit monthly, weekly, and daily pages for 365 days into this one book, okay? Um, this is your A6 size of the Hobonichi Techo English version. And this is a very small book that at first, my kids and my husband kept thinking that I had a, um, a Bible. They thought it was a Bible laying around the house, a new Bible. And so that is very much what it looks like. And the paper is very similar to Bible paper. So I will tell you about this Tomei River paper and you'll see it a lot more in the video. It is very thin. It goes a lot. It goes through a lot. That is just, that is the nature of the paper. But it does not bleed through ever. No matter what mediums you use, you can even use watercolor on it. Well, I mean, if you use a Sharpie, it would probably bleed through. I haven't even tried that, but... Um, it does not bleed through. You can use all different mediums like watercolors people use in here. So that is the Tomei River paper. Like I said, it's very lightweight, so it makes your book very light and you can fit in more pages. This one is just daily and monthly views. You do not have weekly views in this one. And then your Hobonichi Weeks is your monthly and your weekly view with a good amount of notes pages at the end. If you want more notes pages at the end of this, they make a mega weeks, which is something like three times the notes pages. So we'll get into that. We'll get into that. These two do not have a big amount of notes pages at the end or any note pages actually at the end at all. So, um, so this is monthly and daily only. This is monthly and weekly only. And this is monthly, weekly and daily. Okay. So let's do a quick overview on each one of these and how I have used them. Each one also is made really well. I can tell it's gonna hold up through a whole year and all kinds of stuff. You have your overview of your whole year and then you get to go into the index, which I just think is genius and I absolutely love this. What it is, is it's an index of your whole year. So in two pages in the cousin, you get a view of your entire year. Each month goes down and you have like room for like three things at the top. Then you have every day of your month listed and then room at the bottom. You can use this in numerous ways I have seen on videos. How I am using it is I'm just putting big events of the month or appointments just because when the year's over, I think I'll just like going back and you just have a really quick view of all these things. Um, you can also use it to index if you are using your daily pages to maybe take meeting notes or write grocery lists or anything like that. You can index it that way so you know like on August 16th, you would come here and you would find August 16th 
And then, you know, you would write in what your notes on that day are about. And if you're looking for that particular meeting note or that list for something, then it's indexed on that day. So I love that for indexing your daily pages also. So this index could be used for a really small, quick daily gratitude. It could be used for a mood tracker, you know, with just a colored line for each mood. There's just, there's so many things you could use it for. I love this overview. I will say right off, because I forgot to say, this planner does not come in an English version, but everything is also written in English also. Um, so, I mean, not everything is written in English, but like your month names, and you'll see the days of the week. So even though this is the Japanese version, um, and they do not make an English version. So this is your entire year, 2018, but they give you the December of 2017 in your monthly view. Then all your monthly views are right here up front. So we start with January. You have notes rooms here, and you have some note room across the bottom. It's always a Monday start on their calendars, whether it's the weekly view or whether it's the monthly view. It's always a Monday start to their weeks. Their Japanese holiday, holidays are noted in red or this pinkish color. And that's the same color that Sundays are noted in. So all your Sundays are in that red and pink and all your Saturdays are in the blue. So that is something to note. Let me try to show you a month I haven't written a lot on. So you might be able to get a better view at that. Um, you can see how your pages do go through. That is something that if you are using any of the Hobonichis, you have to be okay with because that's just the way it is. It is a very tiny grid. I forget the measurement on it. The grid in the English version is a little bit bigger. It's a tiny bit bigger. So I guess Americans, we like to write bigger. I sure do. Um, so a smaller tip point to your pen works better in here, I have found. I have also found, um, number one, if you are using like a gel tip pen, like this, this is my Pilot .38, or like a Muji .38, then you do get indentions. You can fill them right here. You get indentions from writing in here in pen. They do have um, page, oh, what do they call them? Can't remember, but plastic things you can put under the page you're writing on. Um, no, I can't think of the name of that, but anyway, you do get indentions. Um, if you write with more a felt tip pen, like flare, you don't get indentions from that and different pens. You have to let dry for a certain amount of time on this paper. It's just something you get used to. So if you did buy one, a Hobonichi for the first time, you would probably be experimenting with all your pens, which ones worked best in here. I definitely like 0.38 best in here for myself. Um, anything bigger and I have a hard time writing neatly and I also feel like it smears more because more ink comes out. That's just me. So for every month you have your month numbered but the name of the month is written out in English. Um, I just like to write it in my color of the month and just make it look more festive. Um, Okay, so you have all your monthlies up front and then you start into your weeklies. Um, I have been using this for all different things. I tried planning in it. I was then using it as a journal. So I have tried all different things in this, um, as you can see. And we will, we'll talk about that. But I want to show you a blank week. And I want you to see how much it does go through. So you have to be okay with this. You have to be okay with the fact that you're going to turn to a week and to me, it just doesn't quite feel clean, um, is the way I like to say it, because it already has that used fill. That is a flare right there, and this is just 0.38, and you can see the indentions more from my Pilot G2. But you have to be okay to turning to a week, and it doesn't feel crisp and clean, okay? That's just, in the hope each you get a lot, and to me, you give up some stuff. So let me show you a week that's not written on back here. You can see better and doesn't have ghosting because nothing's written on the pages behind it. And this is how your week is set up. So this is month nine. They tell you it's the 39th week. And I don't know why, but I absolutely love that <laughs> tracking. They tell you the name of the month, September, and then they you have a whole monthly view on your week. And they circle the week that you're on. I absolutely love that. 
I don't know what it is about it. Maybe it's the tracker in me, the planner girl in me. I just love that. Then you have room for notes right here. And then you have, um, you have a 24 hour timeline, 5 a.m. and it takes you to 4 a.m. So if you are someone who needs to track work 24 hours and you work different schedules, then this is a 24 hour timeline. It's one of the only planners I know of that has one. It also though um, is in military time, just FYI. So as it's a 24 hour timeline, but it won't take you long to memorize military time. I remember in college, I worked as um, at the budget rent a car call center. And you know that, let me just tell you, I'm, you know, 40. So that was so many years ago that they did not have really internet reservations. So everyone called in. So it was, it was busy. You wore a headset and you sat or stood at your computer, you know, all the hours you were there on shift. Anyway, we had to memorize a lot for that job. We had to memorize all the airport codes, which I don't remember all of them. And we had to memorize, you know, military time because you, you couldn't be counting. You had to know it like the minute they told you the time they wanted to pick up or return, you had to punch it in at military time. Um, and so anyway, that's not something hard to memorize. But that was a little tangent that I just happened to remember every time I see military time. Okay, so this Monday is red because that is a Japanese holiday, apparently. And the Saturday will always be blue and Sunday will always be red. Now, when I was using this to plan in, a lot of times I would draw a line across here because I did not use the time line. And I like how the times are really small and you don't have to use it um, for times, uh, for timed appointments if you don't want to. I used it for like different to-do lists down here and just I would write if I had any go-tos or timed appointments at the top that I wanted to keep track of. And that's a lot how I used my passion planner too and didn't use the timed columns. So up here, I like that they have this blank box. You could use it for one really important thing for the day, somebody's birthday, or you could put the weather in there every day, um, or your focus for the day. I just like how they have that space. But that's what your weekly setup looks like. So you just go through every week. So it's all the monthlies, then all your weeklies, and that's why I have these three tabs in here, um, and then all your dailies. So I will show you what my dailies were looking like. In the beginning, I thought I would only use this for journaling. And then I wanted to try planning in it, and anyway, it morphed into a lot of different things. But, so your weeklies end, and then it says turning the page to a new year, and then you have this two-page spread to kind of maybe make plans or goals for the new year. And then every month you do get a list. You get a list for that month for January. And then you have your pages for the month. And I'll just show you what journaling in here looks like. Somehow you get used to, um, you know, the ghosting through and feeling the intentions. And it's something you get used to and it just kind of feels like an old book. And you kind of just, I don't know, I stopped minding it and it just, it feels like something cool. The Tomei River paper is very unique. These are just from my Aunt Mary Inglebright um, day by day tear off calendar. And I just love her artwork. And I just thought since I was using this for journaling, I would stick some of them in here. But I also have a Gretchen Rubin um, happier um, day by day tear off calendar. And I know I'm not thinking of the right name for that calendar. It's not day by day. It'll come to me when I'm done with the video. But I, I kept some of the ones I really liked. Happiness tips on there too. And I love her podcast. Anyway, so I was using it for journaling. And then we'll fast forward. And I really wanted to try to use it for planning. So here is what some of my planning looks like in February on these days. This is what some of my planning looks like. I felt like though when I tried to plan in here is that really the ghosting through bothered me a lot more and I don't write that small so I wasn't really fitting correctly on the gridded lines and my planning just looked really messy to me every day and I'm already a messy person and so it just kind of felt out of control to me not out of control that's wrong just it didn't make me happy so I stopped planning and then I thought I would just write one really fun thing 
that happened that day or something that stood out like a gratitude for that day and I would change the color per month. So that's what I did here. And then in March, I did a little bit more of that. Then I tried to do some more planning. See, I keep coming back to it because there is something about having this book where you can easily flip and see your whole week at the same time as your day and you can flip and see your monthly plans at the same time. There is something so awesome about that. But, and I love the feel of this paper, but I guess I just can't ever get happy about the way my daily pages look in here. So I did some more daily planning and then I stopped and then I just started taping in my Mary Bright pictures and then I started writing, you know, one gratitude for the day. So basically this is just going to be some kind of great journaling thing at the end of the year with planning and journaling. But I plan to keep using it like that. So let's go to a day that has not been written on and look at what a day looks like. Okay. Oh boy, there's a lot to these daily pages, you guys. So up here, you have five boxes that you can tick off or have anything important up here in this section. Okay. Then you have, of course, your month is um, May. Sorry, your month is May. It's the 5th of May, so it's Cinco de Mayo here in America. You have your moon phase every single day. You have the day of the week abbreviation, SAT, so you know which day it is. And you have a different color for every single month, okay? And it's on the side of the page, so you can easily flip and find, you know, like month 8. If I want to find October, it's right there in purple. So each month has a different color. This is May, and it's this green. Then you do have, there's a really light line here if you wanted to use this as a time blocking or appointments, okay, you have all the way, they don't have it listed, but it is a 24 hour right here too, but you don't have a line for every hour, okay? So it's, see, it's like four, five, six, seven, eight, and maybe you do have a line for every hour, nine, 10, 11, 12. Um, yeah, you do have a line for every hour. Wow, that's amazing. So right here is just your time block off if you want to use that for a 24 hour. But you do not have to. Um, I would just, you know, do my list in here. And I would actually put if I had any appointments up here that were time. So it's however you want to use your page. It is a really big page with really little grid. So you can mark it off and use it however you want. But they do give you a little bit darker line there if you just wanted to use this for your times. And then this could be for your daily list. This could even be for journaling. Um, you do have a Japanese quote at the bottom of every page, which I wish wasn't there and this was just blank since we can't read it. And then you do get a monthly view for every two page spread. You get a monthly view and those two days circled, which I don't know why I like. I think I rarely look at it when planning, but I just like the thought that it's there which is kind of odd, I know. But I will show you up close here kind of what that looks like. So that is your daily pages. And that takes you in the different color every month. Like you have your lined page per month. Here's November. And you have November the 1st, Thursday. And that's what every day looks like in this planner. Now I will tell you, I'm not sure if the pages with this on it are holidays. I haven't researched that. Or what's going on. But that's not on every page. That's just on some pages. So I could probably refer back to the red holidays. And those would probably be the holidays. Um, that's just my guess. Then your planner ends. And you do have a few note pages here. Like three. And then you have like a timetable. You can map out your week. Like you're, you're in college or something. Um, they just give you some graph paper to write on favorites to fill out, whether it's movies or dinner or books you've read. You have a 100 list, which you also have in your weeks, which I love this. It's just, I'm making mine in my weeks of 100 things that have just made me happy this year. So things I am loving, things that made me happy, I'm just jotting them down. But it could be 100 books, it could be 100 gratitudes, it could be movies you've seen. Um, then there is some, just some other Japanese stuff in here, and I show all of this. Um, there's a gift list, 
addresses. I show all of this in the full walkthrough. So I've already gone on way too long. So that's your cousin. All right, here is your daily. Now I have my tripod up really high to fit all three books in, but I'm not sure why I did that because now the daily is gonna look really small from being far away. Okay, so your daily, there's a lot of similar things in here. Um, in the English version of this A6 Techo, um, only the Sundays are red, everything else is black, so the coloring is different. Your Sundays are red, everything else is black. This is your index in the front. Now it doesn't fit on two pages because this is a smaller book, but they also start you in December of 2017 and then they start January here. So I've been indexing some lists that I wrote in here. And so like I said, that's a good way to make like an errands list, a target list. Um, you can go and find the page you're on by just indexing it in here. So you have your whole year indexed here in a couple pages. And then they do even give you into January, into the third month of 2019. And that's nice because if you have any appointments or anything like that, you can jot them down in here. Okay, then you go right into your monthlies. And like I said, all their monthlies start on a Monday. And in this book, it's all black except Sundays are red. So something else to note they also show you the weeks, and so did the cousin, um, what week you're on, which I really like. And so, and like I said, the grid in this, the graph grid is a little bit bigger, and you can find those measurements on the Hobonichi website, which I will link below. Um, these two Hobonichis I bought on Amazon. Um, you can buy from the Hobonichi site from Japan, some stuff you can only get from there, and it is, you know, you do have to pay shipping from there. Um, Jet Pens is another good site that ships from America with really sh cheap shipping if you want to try to find a Hobonichi from there. Okay, so here's what some of my months look like filled in in here. So they give you all your months and then you go straight into your dailies because there's no weeklies in this book. Okay, but this is the English version. You're not going to have the Japanese holidays in here or Japanese quotes. They do not make an English version of the cousin. Okay, so up here I want to show you they do give you January of 2019, and they're writing it big so you won't get it mixed up. February of 2019 and March, just like in the index, they give you these calendars for the first three months. They do not give you any daily pages into 2019. Turning the page to a new year, they also give you that page. They do have a January list, just like in the cousin, and I just stuck one of my Mary Bright pictures in there. But let's look at your daily page right here and what it looks like. Your daily page is a little bit different in here because it's the English version. You have the day written really big, so it's the 3rd of January. You're on week one. You have a moon phase. And I love this. It also tells you the day of the year you're on. Like this is the third day of the year. So that's just fun for me. And then you have your months numbered right here. And um, the only thing that is color in this whole planner is every Sunday is red. You have a quote that I believe they might be the same quotes that are in the Hobonichi Japanese version, but just translated to English. They're a little bit weird to me. Then you have a calendar for every two page spread, just like the cousin. And they circle the two days that you're on. And I love that once again, you can tell that the graph grid lines are bigger and you have a 24 hour timeline here. They just put noon in the middle and they put a little dinner symbol here. So if you want to use this as a timeline, if you want to like half your page, it's really however you want to do it. Let me show you how I've done some planning in here. So that's what your Sundays look like in red. Every Sunday is in red to stand out and then you start a new week. I kind of like that. And so I have done some planning in here. I tried to use it as a daily planner. Let's go look at some of those days. Um, once again, the messy feel came to me and just it's not quite big enough for a lot of my days. I like to write big and I am naturally already messy and I like to spread out. But here is what some of my daily planning looks like. Then I just wrote a quote here one time um, and then I started using it just for lists. 
Like I would keep it upstairs on my nightstand if I just needed to make some lists of things I was thinking of and then I would index those lists. So that's kind of what I'm using it for right now is just on my nightstand as listing stuff if I'm in bed and I don't want to put a whole bunch of reminders into my phone. And so that's what I'm using it as. You go to the end and you do have a few note pages. They are in red dot grid. And you have a few of those, but not a huge amount. You have a contacts, you have some conversion tables, um, you have some other Japanese information. And I go over all this in my full review. So I don't really wanna make this video too much longer. And you have a name for, uh, a page for your name in the back and you have your unique Hobonichi Techo number, which is kinda of cool of your planner. Okay, let's do the weeks now. So we can see all three of these. The Weeks is probably my personal favorite book. It is just tiny, you guys. And most time right now, I'm keeping this in my purse right now. This is a material cover, but mine has not gotten torn up or messed up. This book has been pushed to lay open on my desk a lot. And then I started carrying it in my purse. So it is held together really well. It comes with two ribbon markers, which is so helpful. You can have one on the week, one on the month. It has this cute Hobonichi end pages um, right there. And something to note is this has the cream paper. So you have your full overview. This paper is cream as opposed to the white of the Cousin and the um, A6 Techo. So I kind of prefer the white paper, I'll be honest. And this doesn't come in an English version either. And this is one of my favorite things. It is your full year layout right here you see your entire year in your index so you do have to write tiny in this index but I love it it's your whole year laid out Sundays are red once again Saturdays are blue and holidays are red for Japan but I love that your whole year is laid out here and you have a little bit of room at the top for listing so that's your index and then they give you December 2017 and then you go right into January, and it's very similar to the other books in that Sunday is red, Saturday is blue, and then they tell you the week number that you're on, you have the month, and the Japanese holidays are red. So you can see the ghosting in it. You do have room to write down here and room here, even in this little book. And they do give you four boxes here if you want that guide for anything. So this is kind of what all my months have looked like filled in here. If you just want to have an overview of that. I like having this little book with me. Um, I don't write everything in it, but I use the note pages a lot at the end. And I like having somewhere to take notes if I'm out or doing something. And so I'll show you on the weekly page, there's room for notes every week. So you have your monthly layouts. And then... They do give you into 2019, also into March, just like in the other books. And they actually start you in this book at the very last week of, um, it's the last end of November going into December. So you get that extra. They give you December in here. So let me show you a blank page of what this looks like, and then I'll show you some of my planning. Although I have filled out quite a bit in this, so I don't know if we'll find a blank, blank page. But you can see the ghosting through. And this is all the way in November. So you have your month, November, and then you have your week starting on a Monday. So it's the 12th of November. You have a moon cycle every day, and it's just Monday through Sunday, and Sunday's red. Then you have your Japanese quote, and you have this whole side for a list of anything you want for that week. You have a monthly view, and that week circled. And this grid, once again, is small, like the cousin. Something else that's really cool is these dots that they have as guides. So if you want to divide this into three sections, you can do that using these dots as guides. And you can have three sections on that side. So there is no grid on this side to write on. The grid you're seeing is just the page behind it. There is grid over here. And they do have one darker line running right here if you want to use that in any way right there to make a line or a chart or um, 
but I love just to have this out and about with me and take notes that week, anything I need to remember or bring home with me while I'm out. Um, I was doing more planning in it at the beginning of the year, and this is what that looks like. But it was just kind of like an extra, and I really, really didn't need it. But I love how I can just write my appointments in here. I can have one color per month. And so all my appointments for the week stand out and like big things that need to be done that week stand out right here. So if you don't mind the ghosting, I think this is the most versatile of the Hobonichis. Um, if you want to try one, it's also the cheapest. This book was only $22 and it is so versatile. It can be used for meal planning. Just imagine that. Your meals could go in here and then your grocery list for those meals here. It could be used for daily gratitudes like my sister is using it. She's writing in a gratitude each day. And then she is kind of journaling a summary of the week here or about her gratitudes. She likes to kind of write, you know, how she's seeing the Lord's hand in her life at that time. And so she's using this for like a gratitude spiritual kind of journal every week. So there, you could use this book so much more than just for planning. And I like to use, let me show you. Oh yeah, all the notes pages at the end and the index. I have to show you this. Okay, so when all your weeks finish right here and you get to go all the way through January 6th because um, that's just your full week there ending the year, then you get this nice little index page. And so you can index all your extra pages back here. I cannot remember the exact number. Let's look here because they are actually, the pages are numbered. That's how you can index them, which is so nice. It is 68 pages of notes. And I believe if you get the mega weeks, it's um, like three times this, I think. Um, but I love having all these note pages in here. So you can see they have a darker line that runs right here if you need to use that for like a column or something like that right there. Um, they have that on every single page. And then you can just use this for any lists or notes that you need to. And you have your index to be able to find it. And they're always with you. So I absolutely love that about this book. Like I said, out of the three books, this is definitely my favorite. It is so versatile and can be used for so many things. And it fits in your purse so well. And it just can be taken anywhere. I love it. So I love the weeks. It's an ingenious book to me. And they do have the 100 list at the end. Like I said, I was actually using this one. I was writing in things I am loving this year. They had written title and I crossed it out and wrote loving. So it's my 100 list. And I just think that's a fun addition. And then there's a few extra pages and stretches from in Japanese, all in Japanese. And um, that's it. And then you do have your own number on this one too. And really nice end pages. I use this like goodie hairband from Target um, that's never been used in my hair because it wouldn't look this nice if it had to just hook around this book when it's in my purse. It holds it together really well because I just didn't want the expense of a cover because it's not really my everyday planner. And I just hook my pen on it like that in my purse and I can always find it and pull it out to make notes. So I love this book. The cover is not, um, it's a little flexible, but it is very thick and you feel like you have something hard enough to write on, but it still has flex to it. Um, next week year, we'll see. I'm very tempted to think I wanna try the Mega Weeks. So we'll see, just because it has a ton more note pages. But I do love how slim and compact and just lightweight this book is. I mean, it is just tiny and awesome. I love it. Okay, guys, that was way longer than I expected. I'm sorry I talked way too long about The Cousin and how I was planning in it. But that's an overview of all three of these books, how I've used them so far this year, we are only right now at the end of March, so we still have a lot of the year to go. And let me know down below if you use Hobonichi, what you use it for, which book you use, and why you love it. I'd love to hear that. Thanks for watching, and happy planning, guys. Bye-bye.